In the year 1328 after Exodus, the death of Mordremoth caused an eruption of magic that permeated throughout the land, reaching far to various locations in and around the Maguma jungle. In the northern reaches of Verdenbrink, a squad of packed soldiers was on a recon mission in the area looking for any Mordrum activity and found an unusual location that had hints of human activity and construction. They traveled through a pass and into a vale, setting camp for the night with the plans to investigate the area at Kandan. For many of those soldiers, that was their last evening. An explosion erupted near the camp, followed by screams. Packed soldiers were ignited in flames and burned alive. Bandits had entered the camp and attacked the sleeping soldiers. Led by their leader, Sabatha, the bandits captured many squad soldiers and took them north, further into the Vale, including the squad's leader. Some pack troops were able to avoid capture, but are unable to go after their friends. In the bandits' retreat, Sabatha activated three magical pillars that summoned a mystical guardian and an impenetrable wall blocking progress further north. As the bandits left the camp, the remaining pack soldiers were left to regroup, but they could not find peace. Screams can be heard daily coming from deeper into the Vale and from beyond a giant wall that expands across one edge of the valley. A reminder that their friends were taken and a message that some may still live. Let's get to work. As reinforcements arrived to the Vale, the pack could be found concentrated in the ruins of the camp, with a few soldiers investigating the surrounding area as well as many, many dead bodies spread throughout. We never saw them coming. They killed some of our soldiers and took the rest hostage. We need to find them. Stay alert out there. Sabatha is ruthless, and her defenses are like nothing I've seen before. Upon debriefing with the interim squad leader, it comes time for a new mission. Break through the barrier, find the bandits, and find the missing squad leader. As the reinforcements headed north, they faced against three guardians attuned to each of the three pillars. One by one, those guardians fell and then eventually morphed into a larger Veil vale Guardian. The large Veil vale Guardian stood before the group of adventurers, their first real challenge. Swords in hand, the group charged towards the Guardian, facing a barrage of attacks of various magical abilities. Rifts in the ground that teleported them around, orbs that caused agonizing pain to any who touched them, large magical explosions that shake the foundations of the arena, and more. As the adventurers and magical guardian fight, the guardian continuously splits into its three forms again before rematerializing. Another. Rise and serve. I can't go on for long. Eventually, the Guardian is able to be defeated, causing each of the pillars to erupt and breaking the barrier that blocked the Pact and adventurers from pursuing the bandits. As the barrier falls, the group is met by the bodies of a few pack soldiers. Not far beyond, the group discovers multiple spirits haunting the passage. Upon defeating them and marching forward, the group is met by a horrifying image, a river of souls seeping into the land, twisting and running around the woods conforming to the land around it. Shelling howls radiate from the corporeal river and hundreds of spirits can be found roaming the land, attacking any living creature. The group of adventurers has no other option but to fight past the spirits and navigate these twisted woods. Through ruins of stone and fallen trees, the group is able to make it to a cemetery within the forest. As the spirits die down, the group is met by a calming peace that was quickly interrupted by a howl. In a clearing beyond the cemetery, the river of spirits twists around a large perch, in the sky, spirits contort and conform, blanketing the ceiling and preventing light from coming through. Suddenly, many of the angry and disturbed spirits morph together into one being. A giant, colossal amalgamation of tortured souls falls from the sky of spirits and floats down upon the perch. God, well before the war. What is that? Gorsaval, the multifarious. The being screams out, demanding revenge. With no other choice, the group glides onto the perch and engages the monster's entity. Spirits chaotically fly around the perch as Gorsaval grabs and slams into the ground. Spirits materialize on the platform and aid Gorsaval in attacking the group. Gorsaval attempts to unleash devastating attacks, which are continuously blocked or avoided by the group. 
The bean keeps trying to kill every member of the squad, but eventually fails. As Gorsoval falls to the ground, a yell can be heard. They made it through the woods! Everyone to the front! I want them captured or dead! The group glides north from the platform and meets the bandits. A camp of poorly constructed wooden buildings, clobbered together across the trees with various airship parts laid around, covered the area. Hundreds of bandits with various weapons, explosives, and flamethrowers perched throughout the camp. At the center, Sabatha. Useless! What do I pay you for? I'll deal with them myself! You're finished! Put down your arms and release these- You came all this way for a few soldiers? You really have no idea what's inside this compound, do you? Only the worthy are taken inside. Like the squad leader. Your little journey ends here! The butcher, with her flamethrower in hand, taunted the group. Without hesitation, the group charged across a rickety bridge. Sabatha detonated the bridge behind the group, trapping them on the platform with her. Prepare the cages. We've got Off some visitors. Explosives rained through the platform as bandits fired from afar with cannons. Sabatha threw explosives at members of the squad and attempted to purge them with her flamethrower. Them up. Burn! Burn! Three of her lieutenants joined in on the battle and one by one fell. Kernan blast them full of holes! Spatter their entrails! <sighs> that feels better. Knuckles, knock them off the platform! Stop it! Court of Friday's best! Dragon wait. The fun's over here! Burn! Burn. No matter what the bandits did, they were met with resistance and force. As the lieutenants fell and Sabatha weakened, the bandits did everything they could to defeat the group. But nothing was successful and Sabatha fell to the ground. The pact who died in the earlier attack avenged. With the bandit tree fort cleared out, the squad of adventurers were able to free the pact taken prisoner from their cages around the fort. Upon freeing the soldiers, some relayed thoughts and information about the events transpiring. One mentioned how there were strange flashes of light in the distance. Another discussed how more soldiers, including the squad leader, were taken further into the thicket. With more bandits and prisoners to be found, the squad of adventurers pressed on. The group entered into a cavern and was met by the gleeful welcome of Scholar Glenna, a member of the Priory who was at the original base camp. Ahead of Glenna's camp lays a winding tunnel filled with mysterious slublings. Young sloths that spit and leap through the air at encroaching adventures. According to the intelligence, this cave system leads deeper into the complex. The missing squad leader is somewhere inside, along with whatever else the bandits are guarding. Keep your eyes open for anything that might lead us in the right direction. Or tell us more about our enemy. Beyond the tunnel of slublings lies Slothosaur. Find an exit, and try not to annoy that monstrosity. A great, giant sloth that has been mutated and now lays within his den blocking the way forward. Surrounded, swarmed by slublings, this giant sloth channels dangerous fire breaths and launches poisonous attacks at his enemies. By following this great, tormented creature, the adventurers are able to leave the cavern. Doing so, they open up to a large clearing. In the center, a large prisoner camp with bandits patrolling each wall, tower, and the land surrounding. Upon exploring the area, the adventurers could see the other side of the wall first experienced in the Vale. Nearby, a large burn pit filled with ash and bones. Close to the burn pit, a forlorn spirit wanders. No! Stop, please! How long have you roamed this land, you poor souls? Approaching the prison camp, several packed prisoners locked in cages can be found, with hundreds of bandits determined to make sure that you are not able to free them. As the adventurers enter the prison camp, the bandits rush to defend. In a balcony above the camp, watch three dangerous bandits who periodically join the fray to drive you away. Aligned along the camp lay cages of tortured wargs, abused by the bandits, that can be set free and turned against the bandits. Beehives dot the trees above, which could potentially be used to distract and scare a bandit. And oil kegs are stationed on the ramparts, which would meet an unfortunate demise should they come in contact with fire. Upon defeating the swarming bandits and each of their lieutenants, the weather in the camp dramatically changes. The squad is then able to rescue the packed soldiers locked throughout the camp. Praise Duena. We would have ended up like the others if you hadn't come. What do you mean? There's more of us, along with a soldier they brought here. Where were they taken? To the north. No one they've taken there has ever returned. 
We've cleared a path to the outside I of the compound. Gather your this. people and head through the cave to the east. There's a packed camp at the jungle entrance. They'll tend to your wounds. Go! Doing so, they learn that even more soldiers were taken further into the pass, including the squad leader. As such, the squad pick up their arms and continue upwards. As they find their way up the cliff, they begin to see a large structure in the distance. Hoisted along the stone edifices are large red banners with an intricate white symbol stitched in the center. Along the path lays dormant Mordrum vines, a reminder of Mordremot's influence upon the world. Pushing through the grand ruins, the squad encounters small groups of bandits camped throughout. Upon reaching the central structure overlooking the entire area, a scream can be heard. I am the Scythe, the bringer of salvation. I need your help. And I shall harvest the souls of the unbelievers. In the center of the structure, a man dressed in white and red robes wielding an elegant staff with the same symbol seen on the banners coming in. The man sacrifices a packed soldier upon a fragment of a bloodstone, and a cage on the back wall, the squad leader. This is it. The adventurers have been pushing through the veil and the pass and finally found the missing squad leader. There is only one obstacle standing in their way. Elements, I command you to bend to my will. As the group charges towards the cultist, the elements themselves seem to contort to the needs of him. Fires light up around the room, great storm clouds envelop the arena, and parts of the floor begin to freeze. As the two forces fight, the cultist attempts to sacrifice members of the squad upon the bloodstone encased in the center of this twisted temple. He casts volleys of poison upon the squad, forcing them to seek refuge on the edge of the arena, lest they bring doom to their friends. As the fight wages on, the man roars and transforms into a giant abomination of man and bloodstone. The hulking creature charges towards the group, screaming. The elements go crazy, unstable, and attempt to rip the temple apart. The hulking abomination lumbers around the arena, desperately trying to destroy everything, until eventually, as the last sword is stabbed through his flesh, he explodes in a storm of magical chaos and dissipates from the world. I need your help. The squad leader calls out as the group rushes toward him. A lever is affixed to the side of the temple that allows the group to free him from his cage. Upon release, Bennett, the squad leader, fills the group in on what he knows. The Mersat preyed upon the weak and impressionable, who in turn worshipped them as gods. Calling themselves the White Mantle, these converts sacrificed innocence and toppled the Crichton monarchy. The chaos they inflicted on Tyria was short-lived. They were eventually crushed, and their scattered remnants went into hiding. But pockets of their fanatical followers have been operating in the shadows ever since. The White Mantle, a cultist group that plagued Crida hundreds of years ago, who kidnapped civilians from different towns across Krida and brought them to the Maguma jungle to sacrifice them upon the bloodstones located here in order to empower the lords they worshipped. A group thought to have been defeated, with any rising force in the years since to have been stopped, has returned in force. The squad continues to debrief Bennett. How do you know these people are White Mantle? Look around. Those banners, their weapons, the outfits, they all scream religious fanatics. There's propaganda everywhere. Explore the temple and the living area. You'll see what I mean. The other prisoners might know more. We have to stop them. Agreed. If the White Mantle has been operating out here unchecked for this long, who knows how strong they are. They're sacrificing people and harnessing their magic, but for what? The Mursat are all dead. Unless... no. I don't even want to think about that. They could destabilize the Crichton government. The Queen and the Shining Blade need to be notified. What do you know about the Bloodstone? Their weapons are imbued with powerful magic. I bet my right eye it has something to do with the Bloodstone. It's a relic that can store vast amounts of magical energy, including the souls of the sacrificed. Centuries ago, the Mursat used Bloodstone magic to keep their enemies at bay. But the Mursat were all killed off except for one who was gravely wounded. Tell me about the last Mursat. Lazarus was the last surviving Mursat, 
though most theorize he wandered off to die. But if the White Mantle are actively sacrificing innocents, it's not a stretch to think the Mersat are also benefiting. Lazarus, if he's alive, may be under their protection. Where are these ghosts coming from? You saw them too, huh? There's lots of spirit activity in the woods. Something agitated them. The White Mantle have been sacrificing people, and using bloodstone fragments to siphon the magic from them. We all felt the shockwave when Mordromoth died. That may have blasted them free. After having finished the briefing with Bennett, a realization sunk into the group. While their mission to reinforce the Pact Recon group and rescue the kidnapped soldiers and squad leader had come to a finish, there was still much to do. Leaving the temple, the group glides towards a clearing in the wall and run through. Upon doing so, the group is met by a shocking sight. Large white fortifications of towers and ramparts lay strewn around the land in front of them. A huge castle seen off in the distance. In the middle of the Maguma jungle, the White Mantle, who were thought to have been dead, have created a grand fortress. A monument to their cruelty and a reminder of their ferocity. Scholar Glenna rushes out of a nearby cave and debriefs the group about what she knows. We got your message. We appreciate your willingness to help. But are you sure you're up for the mission? When Bennett told me about the horrors he endured while in White Mantle captivity, I felt it my duty to assist. We'll blast these zealots back into the history books. All right. I don't know what'll happen inside, but I'm glad you're with us just the same. We'll let you know when we're ready to begin the assault. We're ready. Has everyone made peace with their gods, spirits, deities, or trees? Good. I'm carrying a heavy payload and won't be of much use in a fight. I can cast spells when absolutely needed, but for the most part, you'll need to keep me alive. You think you can do that? Any volunteers for escort duty? <coughs> Fine, we'll figure it out as we go. Shout, and I'll follow you, but don't mistake my willingness for blind obedience. They come up with a plan to approach this threat. Mine. Glenna is carrying a heavy payload. The group needs to escort her to the entrance of this castle and breach the wall, exterminating any white mantle that are in their way. Invaders at the gate! Ready the defenses! Notify Zera and await her orders. Figures we couldn't just walk right in. We need to find a way to reach that lever. Protect me. I'm about to try something. What are you doing? Getting us across. How did you do that? Practice. Hooray! I'm sorry, were you talking again? Fury rising! Bomb planted. Cover your ears. Do it! Upon bringing the bridge down, the group is met with heavy resistance. White mantle continuously pour from all directions. Large wargs attempt to rip through the group. Landmines dot the road ready to explode upon contact. White Mantle atop towers with large bloodstone charged turrets that are raining chaos down upon the invaders. I want these intruders destroyed! History is being made today and nothing can get in the way! Who was What's this? Our next target. Pick up the pace, people! We've got a party to crash! The path diverges. We may want to send a team through there to catch the enemy off guard. Make sure someone stays with me. I need protection. Over here! I'm not your puppy! The group splits, sending a saboteur towards the towers while the rest of the group continues their march towards the front gate. Send in reinforcements! <laughs> Keep them out at all costs. She seems particularly motivated to keep us out. Something big is happening inside. Group by group, the White Mantle fall. Tower by tower, the turrets cease their firing. As Glenna and the squad approach the front gate, they are met by the power of a high-ranking White Mantle. We've secured champion! Into the fray! A mesmer who teleports around the platform and attempts to confuse the squad. Your death will bring him life! But he too falls. With the white mantle threat in front of the gate neutralized, Glenna affixes a bomb on the gate and blows it open. This is it. Q 
Keep watch while I prepare the explosives. This should be the last barrier in our way. Everyone clear? Explosion imminent! Doing so unveils a great courtyard filled with statues of white mantle and a better view of the castle. Suddenly, a great white mantle mesmer appears in the center of the courtyard. How dare you set foot on sacred ground! Whatever it is you're doing here, it's not going to work. Lazarus will lead the White Mantle to rule a new Krita, and there's nothing you can do to stop his return. You're already dead. Enjoy my creation. It'll be the last you see. One powerful Mesmer right there. Watch me make her disappear. She just slipped up. They may have Lazarus. If so, then the sacrifices at Salvation Pass were meant to heal him. Good luck without me. Behind her, a large construct appears in the temple ahead, guarding the way forward. The construct appears as a large, contorted white mantle statue that lumbers about. Before engaging the construct, the group has the opportunity to explore the courtyard and surrounding areas. Many important locations and items can be found. In the northwestern corner of the courtyard, the group discovers many crates and loose bloodstone crystals lying about. A pulley can be seen allowing the white mantle to bring supplies up from a dock below the castle. Down at the docks, a boat is moored and it is learned that the castle is built next to an outlet of water that connects to a large lake that covers much of the Maguma wastes. In the courtyard proper lay many important relics and monuments to the White Mantle, including the statues of many great White Mantle leaders throughout their history, including one... Sol D'Alessio. So you started this mess. The squad regroups and begins to turn their attention back towards the construct. Entering the arena, several large statues can be seen encircling the arena. As the group engages this great construct, spirits materialize out of the statues and begin to assault the squad. Target blend identified. Talents. Who will die next? That feels better. My army is limitless. It's no matter. Repairs are trivial. Keep your hands off that. I have limitless power at my disposal. Think faster. Another. Blow them to pieces. Endure the pain. Fast as the wind. My construct is unstoppable! More! As the adventurers strike down each spirit and take advantage of opportunities to strike the construct, the construct begins to raise its hands in the air and begins to look unstable. It seems I underestimated you. But I don't need to destroy you. Rare I treasure. only need to slow you down. I'm clipping your wings. Try not to fall to your death. A new era for Kreta begins with the return of Lazarus. Prepare yourselves for his awakening. The construct explodes in a spectacle of magic, blowing off the roof of the temple and opening the way into the castle proper. You're living on borrowed time. The castle has become a twisted, confusing mess due to the actions of Zara and the White Mantle. Nothing makes sense. Walls, ramparts, and towers float across a large chasm. The earth itself is ripped apart and travels precariously through the air. Structures sit upside down and mirrored. White Mantle wander around in group. Portals open and close, taking anyone who enters through them to seemingly unpredictable locations. A mystical haze envelops the sky. And in the center, a large rotating statue that inflicts fear on those who make eye contact with it. As the group figures out how to transverse the twisted castle and reach the end... It's time we settled this. My thought exactly. 
they discover that Zera is holding out high in the sky upon multiple floating platforms. The platforms move and contort to the needs of the High Inquisitor. What are you waiting for? Your life is mine. How does it feel to make it so far, only to fail? Upon engagement, Zera disappears and in the center of the platforms, a ginormous, elegant illusion rises high into the sky. Ley lines appear and the adventurers attempt to navigate the platforms until engaging Zera in the central platform. Zera strikes with ferocious and plentiful attacks. Your death will bring him life. White Mantle teleports to the platform to aid her in her fight. For hundreds of years we have hidden in plain sight, living in your cities, manipulating your politics. Soldiers, farmers, scholars, all swearing allegiance to the cause, all waiting for the moment to strike. That our time is now. We rise from the shadows to claim what is ours. He is almost complete. Even if I die, he will live. Bloodstone shards appear around the arena, invigorating Zera in her cause of righteousness. Zera teleports the group around and attempts to unleash devastating attacks with her illusions. Before me. No matter how much magic she casts, no matter how many illusions she summons, the adventurers strike her down. I'm everywhere. You can't hide. In doing so, her illusions shatter, and the platform dissipates under their feet, causing them to fall from the sky and tumble towards the broken castle. Upon landing on the ground, the adventurers discover a large temple decorated with marsat busts and icons of the White Mantle. Prominently in the back is some sort of stasis chamber with what appears to be an open figure for a marsat. Scholar Glinda arrives and approaches the squad to debrief. What happened? What I'm... Oh my! I see you've made a mess of the place. You shattered the bloodstone shards and caused a lay rift reaction. That would explain things. Congratulations on silencing a high-ranking white mantle zealot. Not many can say they've done that. When you're all done high-fiving and back-slapping each other, you may want to head down to the stasis chamber. What's in the stasis chamber? Go see for yourself. All I can say is that I think we have a problem on our hands. Where have you been? While you were dealing with Zira and her ill-tempered illusions, I investigated the courtyard. There's all manner of white mantle propaganda stashed in strange places. You may want to poke around there if you haven't already. Then I heard the ruckus you made by interfering with the lay rifts and bloodstone shards, so I hurried here. I wasn't expecting Zira to put up such a fight. She was no ordinary mesmer, that's for certain. She harnessed more magic than Matthias back at Salvation Pass. All this tinkering with bloodstone fragments and loose energy is dangerous business. Magic is becoming more difficult to control. It's behaving in unpredictable ways. Remember Slothosaur? I wouldn't have imagined such a weird creation under normal circumstances. And don't even get me started on what Zira managed to accomplish here. How many mesmers can rip apart the very foundation of a castle like this? It's frightening. All this mayhem is real, not some magician's trick. This castle is in shambles. And I doubt it's going to return to normal anytime soon. Do you think we'll see any other creatures changed by magic like Slothosaur? That weird creature back in Salvation Pass? Ugh, where do I begin? In all my travels, I have never seen anything quite so freakish. It's as if a sloth and a slug had too much wine and woke up the next day with regrets. Hm. Huh. Do you think that's actually possible? After he died, he released magic. Hard to say if the White Mantle experimented on him or the residual magic released by Mordremoth caused him to mutate. Either way, I hope not to encounter another. A shame he was killed, though. I bet whoever beat him to death probably feels absolutely terrible. He just wanted a hug. You're not serious, are you? What's in the stasis chamber? All I can say is that I think we have a problem on our hands. Great. While the rescue mission was a success, and while the White Mantle have faced a massive defeat, there's no room for comfort given the newly uncovered information. Lazarus has returned. <laughs>